Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, we are going to discuss the different types of business structures, and there are mainly four types of business structures, sole proprietor, general partner, LLC, and corporations, which is divided into two subgroups, which I'll explain. First, a sole proprietor is someone who runs an uncorporated business that's just one owner who pays personal income tax on profits earned from that business. Examples include real estate agents, consultants, freelancers, artists, landscapers, accountants, even a podcast host, to name a few. A sole proprietor, there is no need to apply for an employee identification number, which we've highlighted on a previous episode. Now, Limited Liability Company, an LLC, is a business structure in the U.S. that protects its owners from personal responsibility for its debts or liabilities. Example given, if an LLC is sued, the owner's personal assets are protected and only the LLC assets can be used during liquidation. In fact, there are many well-known companies that are distinguished as LLCs. Nike Swoosh LLC, IBM, eBay, Hertz Rent-A-Car, Sony, Pepsi-Cola. A general partnership is a business agreement by which two or more individuals agree to share in all assets, profits, and financial and legal liabilities. It is important to understand that partners agree to unlimited liability, meaning liabilities are not capped and can be paid through the seizure of an owner's assets, house, car, boat, This is different than an LLC where assets seized must be owned by the LLC. An example given is a work car, a company computer, an office space, office rug, coffee mug, coffee plant, toilet paper, any asset that was purchased by the LLC. Furthermore, any partnership may be sued for the business debts, according to Investopedia. Examples of a general partnership includes law firms, independent medical practices, architecture firms, family ventures, The last business structure I will highlight is corporations, which can be divided into two groups, S corporation and C corporation. Even though both business structures get their names from parts of the internal revenue code that they are taxed under, understanding the difference between the two is important. First, let's start off with an S corporation. S corporation refers to the type of corporation that meets specific internal revenue code requirements. If it does, it may pass income along with other credit deductions and losses directly to shareholders without having to pay federal corporation taxes. S-Corps are usually associated with small businesses, 100 or fewer shareholders, and the S-Corp status effectively gives a business the regular benefits of incorporation while enjoying tax-exempt privileges of a partnership per Investopedia. Examples can be very broad. However, the key is it must be a small business of 100 or fewer shareholders. Creatively Insane is an S-Corporation. Now, C-Corporation. C-Corporation is a legal structure for a corporation in which the owner or shareholders are taxed separately from the entity. Almost all C-corporations are public traded companies. However, all public traded companies must be a C-corp to trade stocks. I am sure some of you right now are wondering, wait a minute, Mr. Gabriel Flores just said Nike is an LLC and is trading as a C-corp. How is that? Well, let's talk about it. Instead of Phil Knight, the chairman of Nike, owning 128.5 million shares of Nike, the C-corporation... Phil Knight created an LLC to hold those Class A shares that will be owned by 14 directors, which means the entity called Swoosh LLC will have an important voice in the future of the sports giants, per Matt Kish of the Portland Business Journal. S-Corps are not publicly traded companies. This is because S-Corp can only have 100 shareholders, while a C-Corp can have unlimited number of shareholders. The entrepreneur should have a good idea of the business structure they plan to function in and have an understanding of the pros and cons of each type of business is important. Taxation is also an important concept to understand when determining the business structure, something I certainly will not go over because I am not a tax advisor or tax accountant. However, I would encourage the entrepreneur to take some time to comprehend the various business structures. If the task seems too daunting, do not feel discouraged and ask for help. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy this episode. Welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship 
where we interview entrepreneurs to inspire the future entrepreneur. I'll be your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. So grab a drink, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. safe dance space for all people to take back pleasure in their bodies with classes to help feel confident, strong, and empowered. With a tagline, you are beautiful, capable, and amazing. Please welcome the founder of Twerking Fab, Renice Nisi Harrell. This episode is sponsored in part by Burnside Knives, essential tools for outdoor enthusiasts and working professionals like yourself. Visit BurnsideKnives.com. Your knife says a lot about you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I am here with the owner of Twerk Fab. I'm I'm really excited because this is, I don't know how to twerk, to be honest with you. I, <laughs> I don't know how to twerk. Nisi Harrell, how are you doing? I'm great. How are I'm, you? I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> this, is a, this is the first twerk entrepreneur I've had. So uh, there's not first, a lot of us out yeah, there. <laughs> <laughs> so first, let's uh, let's let's introduce the world to you, uh, to Nisi, and then uh, we'll get going. So who is Nisi? Hi. <laughs> so I'm Nisi. I am the creator of Twerk and Fab, which is funny because it was not Twerk and Fab at first, but I'll tell you about that a little later. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> it's part of you know the journey. Um, so I am a mother and daughter and entrepreneur um living here in portland born and raised so i'm a native out here nice and um i've been an entrepreneur actually for a long time and that's just like kind of my vibe yeah is like doing things how i want to when i want to (laughs) on my own (laughs) it's just me (laughs) i like it i like it so so let's what what did you do before you said you're an entrepreneur. um so i mean i i had my kids pretty young so it was just kind of whatever jobs I could get. So I worked at a deli for a while until I decided to go to school and actually went to school for massage therapy. Oh, nice. So that was about 16 years ago. And yeah, I just even went into massage therapy and worked for people for like a few years and then just started doing my own thing and realized I liked working for myself. Oh, yeah. And so I did that. Yeah. I still do that. So yeah, that's my like main <laughs> job. It's like my passion is health and fitness period. So, nice. yeah. So, let's let's talk talk about Twerk and Fab. Yeah. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, Twerk and Fab now, what it is, uh I don't even want to say it's like a dance format or dance fitness format. It kind of became like a movement of body positivity. So, and it just kind of manifested on its own. Um I just had the intention of bringing a style of dance that we didn't have out here that I noticed a lot of people really, really wanted. Um, And so I was like, well, why not just do it myself? (laughs) So, you know, you see the need for it might as well. And that's kind of how it started. So is it, is it kind of like a, like a exercise studio or more of a dance studio? It's almost like a fusion of dance fitness and dance studio dance, like choreography so I have a background in teaching like hip-hop classes so I ta- I taught like uh, what is it called like hip-hop cardio type oh, okay stuff. Yeah, yeah so I was doing that in the fitness kind of community and teaching dance classes taught like hit classes Pilates um, all sorts of different fitness formats and I really enjoyed doing it but I was like I don't know how to take twerk when I you know when the idea came about and make that accessible to everybody because if you do dance I don't know if you've ever tried to dance fitness class like you know Zumba or yeah, you no, jam or anything. don't even, don't even yeah. dance on TikTok <laughs> I keep telling these people you know but in TikTok <laughs> that's a good example like people have to kind of like copy and you know come up with the routine and right. you know recreate it but when you do dance fitness in the gym each song typically is like a different movement that you're doing and you're just kind of keeping up you sure, don't really sure. have to do the moves it's like more about moving your body right okay um whereas choreographed fitness or choreographed dance you're kind of building on an eight count 
So if have you ever heard people talk about studio dance, it's like five, six, seven, eight, da da da. You know, oh, like they kind of yeah, do that. Yeah, okay. So it's like, and then to just someone who doesn't know dance, they're like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> I don't know how to do that. And you know, it's not really supposed to be about sweating and like the fitness part of it. So I, I wanted to kind of bring both together, and that's how I came up with the idea. So why 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 did the concept like why did you why twerking in particular? Um, so I was teaching hip hop, and it's so so funny to say out loud now that I'm gonna say this. <laughs> there were a lot of ladies, particularly older ladies, oh, that were yeah. like, "Your butt shakes so much. How do you get it to shake like that?" And I was just like, "I don't know. Uh, I could try to teach you." <laughs> And so, like little things like that would happen all the time. Found and so, a saw need. You know, and took yeah, it. that's like exactly what it was. I was Addressing just like, oh, a customer's okay. need. I keep telling these <laughs> listeners that's so important. It is. And then, like in California, I would follow like dance people in California, Houston, Atlanta, and like people were twerking, and it became like this big thing in in that dance culture and I was like man I wish they had classes up here like that and I did take a booty popping class oh there um, you go my goodness and that was the I only thing I found <laughs> I know, right? so it was, it was the only one and then I think she moved out of state and so I, you know it wasn't really accessible to anybody out here at all right um so I just figured why not that's <laughs> and like what would that look like and yeah you know I wrote it down just like what would the moves look like how would you apply that in dance choreography versus just repeating the same types of moves to burn calories and fitness and honestly if you did that in twerk your back would probably hurt <laughs> and yeah. so would your legs because you're you can only use so many body movements and muscles to on repeat before you're just exhausted that's, that makes sense. So, yeah. So let, let's kind of talk about that a little bit because I I never knew that you'd have to kind of get – it makes sense to kind of create a choreographed, you know, 30-minute set or something like that. Mm-hmm. How did you kind of begin – do you have like a, a, a career in dance as well? I don't. And that's kind of the funny part too is like when I was younger, I loved dancing. So in the – I'm a, born in 84, so – 80s and 90s like MTV and VH1 was oh, yeah. huge and Go so, 80s baby. You know, like oh, hey. 80s, baby. And like Janet Jackson was always dancing <laughs> on TV and like all this stuff and so I would copy. And so I taught myself how to dance. You know, I could keep a beat. It just was a natural thing for me. So I was always drawn to just dance and music and it just kind of became a thing for me. So I could pick up routines pretty quickly and so when I became an adult taking dance fitness classes I was on it pretty quick I would be able to get the choreo you know choreography and um, even freestyle and so it just was a fun thing that made me feel happy so that's why I would do it and I think because of that when I came and did my own thing when you love what you're doing it just kind of flows I guess (laughs) and yeah it just came together and I did start also taking other people's dance classes a lot more. And that kind of helped me clean up and my skills. Um, being an instructor helped me learn my counts. Um, there's, I mean, with TikTok and YouTube and Instagram, you can watch all sorts of choreographers. And so I was just in it because I really wanted to learn, like, how can I take these different moves, kind of almost Frankenstein them into my own thing and add my own flavor that is that would embody like twerk, nice. what twerk is. Yeah. So, so once you've, once you created the process, how did you kind of morph it into a business? How did you start that process? Cause you kind of mentioned, okay, now you had a plan. Yeah. Once you plan, where'd you go? So I, I think with my background, just in massage therapy, knowing body mechanics, knowing the business aspect of it. Cause with massage, I had to learn as I went, like I, the spa clothes that I was at, they gave me my clientele list and I had family and friends that would back me up financially to help me get things going and just do, do my business. So I did it. But then you don't think about things like business licensing and, you know, all the things you need for the state and tax, you know, all the stuff, advertising, like I learned as I was going. So when I wanted, when I wanted to put Twerk and Bab together, I thought like, how can I start this the right way? you know, get an LLC? Do I want to get a trademark? You know, all these things so that I can just 
start it the right way and structure it the right way so that it will just I don't have to go backwards as I was going forward if that makes sense so I put the plan together (laughs) talked to some people um I had a good network and community and just got everything going now now why was it important for you to kind of because I think this is a great great topic why was it for you important to kind of uh make that determination about like should I go LLC why was it important for you um, just because I knew I wanted the business to be mine, just my own thing. I'm doing it. And if I wanted to grow it, then I could grow it from there. You know, so I already had everything protected. It was its own entity. And I really saw with social media, the importance of branding. And I knew that, you know, just like with massage or fitness or anything, I can't do something forever physically. But if I want it to continue, what will that look like? besides beyond me you know if I wanted to make this a business where I have other teachers who I you know teach how to do what I do and then they you know bring that out to everybody else so I wanted it to be able to be buildable like that so it can grow in that way so it was important for me to like really brand twerk and fab yeah so now what you you were mentioning kind of you know working with your friends and family after you got your clientele from your massage therapy um how did, did you use that uh, revenue to kind of use, use to fund twerk and fab or how did you end up funding this? Yeah, I, <laughs> I am a believer in bartering. Hustler. That is a huge <laughs> thing for me because <laughs> I was like, I broke up just like this, you know, poor girl, you know, in Oregon. So it's like, I didn't have money from family like that. I built my own business. I had saved my own money. And, you know, there were things that I would have to put money into that were beyond what I could afford sometimes, especially the trademark, because I did get it trademarked. I mean, that was like thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars $1,400 to do that. Um, and people are like, why would you even do that? But I was like, trust me, branding. Yeah. Like I people got, can I got steal your shit. Entrepreneurship you know, trade. yeah. And it's me. yours. <laughs> yeah. So you own that. And it's and pride. It, yes, exactly. And like. You know, if I want people to believe in what I do, I have to believe in it, too. And it has to be real and solid. So with that, I actually had a friend who was a lawyer, a trademark lawyer, and we bartered for services. Love it. So it worked that way. I love yeah. it. Now, you, one thing you mentioned, you, you kind of mentioned your upbringing, right, uh, living here in Portland. Let's, let's talk a little bit about that. What, what about your upbringing kind of helped define you as the person you are today? Um struggle (laughs) uh you know portland oregon especially on the west side is very white uh i am not white i am actually (laughs) black and i am mexican and i grew up with the mexican side of my family um so you know i was like my grandparents lived in a trailer park and i mean i didn't i knew i was poor but I was happy, you know, as far as like just the way we lived because I had so many family members and friends that loved me and we were fed and taken care of and things were good, you know, even when they were bad. But, you know, I understood that in order for us to have what we had, we needed to work together, you know, watching my siblings, getting them off to school, the cleaning, the cooking, like all the things. So I think growing up, knowing that if you work hard with your community, of people, which was my family, then we could survive. And so I think that kind of molded me into the person that I am now where I'm like, okay, I'm not, I know I can't do everything on my own. I know that things are going to be hard and struggle and I can struggle, but that's okay. Cause yeah, you know, yeah. I'll get there eventually. <laughs> the struggle. You, I mean, you learn for the struggle. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. So what, what would you say was kind of difficult starting the business? So you kind of went, you know, you lost your clientele or your, your, your other business closed, right? The massage therapy. You're getting funding for this new, what was difficult kind of going in and starting this twerking fab? Um, I think like, that's a hard one because there was a couple things. <laughs> yeah, and if there's multiple things, yeah, by all means. Um, in the dance and fitness community, especially, there can be a lot of gatekeeping. So that was kind of a thing. Uh, popularity was a thing. Um, and then just like this whole like weird stigma behind twerking, that was a thing. 
So there was just a couple of things that were kind of, you know, I got a little pushback, I think, and people weren't understanding. I mean, I, I don't even think I knew what it was either at first, like what it was going to be. I just knew I wanted to dance and people wanted to learn how to twerk, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, Fair enough. Yeah. So that's kind of how I just had to kind of push through all of that stuff and really let people know that it's okay to shake your butt. <laughs> um, that. And I think that's probably how it became more of a body positive kind of movement was because I was had to reinforce so much like it's OK if these things jiggle like embrace the jiggle I embrace would say the that j- all the time. <laughs> you know, you need things to jiggle if you want to twerk. And so or you don't need to have the biggest butt to be able to twerk and you don't need to know how to dance to be able to twerk. I was like I was not trained to dance. I was self-taught. You know, so all of those things, I think, by relating to the people and having empathy with them, um, they were able to kind of feel confident and know that they can do this. <laughs> and so, yeah, it, it kind of manifested on its own because of that. I love it. Now, why why is it so important for the individuals that do this, especially for you, for them to feel confident? I think because when you think of twerking, there's a certain image that we all have in our heads and it is very popular right now especially um but you got to have you know the little waist and the big butt and you know be on rhythm and be able to isolate your butt cheeks and you know all the things and I'm like no you don't actually have to you know and um and I think a lot of people didn't want to do it because of that at first like thinking like they don't have the body type to do that um they don't know how to move in that way and I wanted people to be able to like say, no, I I can do these things and I can have fun with it. It can be sexy. It can be sassy in the body that I have. And I mean, my body's not even the ideal type of body either. You know, I'm five, seven, I'm 220. Like people don't even think I'm 220, but I am. And, uh, you know, I just have more of an athletic build. I'm going to tell you, you right, I don't believe it. I don't believe yeah, it. Yeah, I know. I everybody <laughs> thinks I'm smaller. I think it's because I lift. <laughs> but, you know, like the, the waist hip ratio is not <laughs> the ideal. You know, I was like, no, I got a belly. I've had two kids, that, you know, hey, yeah. like I have cellulite and stretch marks and that's OK. Show it up. That's fine. Yeah. And so I wanted people to feel comfortable and confident in their body and i think if you don't it makes it harder to twerk yeah because you hold back you know that's a very good point in fact i kind of maybe this is a horrible analogy but i kind of uh, equate it to like um karaoke right like people i don't care if you're a crappy singer just get out there and do it trust me the more and more you do it you're probably gonna get a better karaoke singer eventually Exactly. Trust me, everybody's going to get better at karaoke and everyone else will drink a little bit more and you'll sound better. <laughs> One of the two, right? Exactly. One of the two. Now, what would you say has been, now, when did you start this business first? Uh, it was before the pandemic. I want to say it was 2019, 2018 um, was when I was kind of just starting it. I was still in the process of getting things trademarked and LLC'd, but I wanted to get the classes going just to, because that was what I learned with the trademark was like, start having classes sell tickets to any workshops or events that you're doing um you know create content and all those things so I just wanted to get it going and so I found a studio rented some space out invited people that were already my students from my hip-hop classes um my friends and just their friends and it just kind of grew that way and um yeah just kind of kept going and then you know the pandemic happened yeah yeah so let's (laughs) let's talk about that what what has been difficult about starting this business so I mean it was it was so bad because I had swapped to different studios um just because I wanted to also support um BIPOC businesses or like female-owned businesses that was just what I wanted to do so I wanted to make sure I was at specific studios um so I had one on the east side one on the west side and everything had was kind of rebuilding because I had swapped studios and then, you know, the pandemic happened. And I was like, oh, great. And, you know, doing massage, that was all solid. I had been there forever um, having my own business with that. But then that stopped, too. And when you're an entrepreneur and you don't have, yeah, uh, you yeah. know, job that pays you hourly or salary or anything like that's it. Yeah. You're out of money. <laughs> Luckily, I'd you know, been working for myself long enough. I knew to save money. 
But um, I mean, nobody knew how long it was going to last. And especially with fitness or dance or anything where you're in the studio, I was like, how are we going to dance or by each other huffing and puffing? And there's a pandemic going on, you know, it, it let alone with massage. I didn't even know when that was going to happen because you're in close contact. So very true, very true. It was pretty terrible. So I tried to keep things going with my following by going on live on Instagram, working with other instructors in the area that were teaching dance or any kind of fitness and just doing mini sessions, you know, and people would just join. So, um, yeah, I was like, it was bad. <laughs> You know, I I do like the innovation of of going out and collaborate with the community. I think that's that's the beauty. And I keep talking about this on this podcast is this mm-hmm. community in general is just how amazing it is when one of the community members needs help, how quickly all the other community kind of rallies totally. around that individual. It's like, okay, let's do it. We're all in, in this thing together. We're going to figure it out kind of thing together. Totally. Now, in, in your perspective, what has been easy? Has there been anything easy about starting this business? And what, and if so, what, what would you say would be easy? Um, I mean, the easy part is, I mean, I don't want to say it's easy, but like coming up with the, what I want to do in class, that's the easy part. Cause I know like what song I want, how I, how I want the moves to kind of look and I'm listening to it all week and coming up with stuff in my head. I get to practice it, put it together. Sometimes I ask my friends like, Hey, what do you think of this? And they give me feedback. And that's just kind of like the easy, fun part. The hard part is like getting the butts in the class sometimes, <laughs> especially when like we're going, you know, going through the pandemic. Some people are like, nope, don't want to be around other people. Um, when the masks were off for a little while, classes started to pick up pretty quick. And then masks came back. Numbers died again. So that part was like it would have been easy, you know, to just bring butts into class. but. I think because the pandemic kind of screwed it up. But yeah, just coming up with it, um, that's the easy part. Coming up with uh, content for social media, that's the easy part. Surprisingly, because I don't know what I'm doing sometimes with marketing and <laughs> Man, I do my own do I. I keep telling people, <laughs> I don't know what the hell I'm doing over here. It works, though. Like I, People like little video clips and cool flyers. And yeah, I'm like, hey, pe- this is fun. This people is are liking some of the things yeah. I post and other things. I'm like, I don't know what the- <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. But- <laughs> I, I post one meme. Everybody loves that thing. Right? Oh, man, I post videos of myself. Nobody likes it. It's Damn. Like, oh, what does that say about me? What's going on? <laughs> See, mine's the opposite. It's like I post certain things and I'm like, nobody's liking my flyer. Then I post myself shaking my butt in a video, and everybody uh, loves it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's the problem. Yeah, that's I the problem. Just, you I need to shake a little ass. Up. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's seen. now. What would you say? And now, as a small business owner, what keeps you up at night? Oh. Um. Okay. I said this was the easy part was the choreography, but at the same time, I stress on it because it's like. Is everybody going to like it? When it's new choreography, I'm up like, okay, do I, am I going to remember, you know, the order? Am I going to remember my counts? Are people going to relate to what we're doing? Are they going to be able to execute it? Um, and how many people are going to actually show up for it? Will they come back? Um, that's one big one. And, yeah, just if people are going to come to class, you know, I worry, um, especially in Oregon, <laughs> Because, like, the weather, that's always a big thing. Like, if it's shitty weather, people don't want to venture oh, out. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's like, if it rains too hard, people don't want to come. <laughs> like, it's the weirdest thing. Um, depending on if there's holidays. Like, all those little things you don't think of, it actually makes a difference. Um, so, those th- But mostly, yeah, choreography. I want people to love it because I love it. And it's very personal for me. So that part is hard. <laughs> when I have new stuff, it's hard. Now, how do you how do you kind of market new stuff or brand new stuff? Do you do you kind of show off your um, dance moves and like how do you kind of entice new clients to come out? I've actually been thinking about doing that more. Yeah, doing some TikToks. Look, I <laughs> I can't do TikToks. <laughs> I suck at it. I try to figure it out. Yeah. I can't do it, and then I just get frustrated. So I'm like, ugh. But when I have people record certain stuff during class or right after or, or something like that, no problem. Um, people want to record me dancing, no problem. And then I use those things to create content. Um, and that seems to do really well. Mostly I just use a lot of the flyers that I have, put it out there. I tag. 
I reach out to my friends and family and just people that take my classes and, hey, can you tag me? Can you share this? Because I feel like the more traction that that gets, the more exposure. Yeah. Like um, last night, for instance, I had two new people in my class, never seen them before. They'd never taken my class before. And they were like, oh, yeah, we're from Utah. And we're just visiting this week. And we came across your page on Instagram because we were looking at somebody else's page that shared your stuff. And that's how we found you. Man, so that's cool. You know, it's pretty cool. So it happens more often than you think. It's it's that organic marketing. And that's kind of like, you know, the podcast. So folks, you know, listeners, I'm sure if you do not yet shades of E on Instagram, please go follow it. Because that's really where I tend to share a lot of these small business owners, uh, entrepreneurs information. So like, in fact, Nissi and I were talking about it earlier. It's like, hey, moving forward organically, I'm going to be posting whatever you post, I'm going to share that information. And then I'm gonna have a link to our episode, right? Because it's going to provide this organic impressions right and so like oh i heard about you from the shades of entrepreneurship and if i get one person in your class heck yes yeah yeah that's I, totally great and if it's me just don't don't be telling anybody <laughs> <laughs> keep, that, keep that to yourself <laughs> now, that's the best way to do it <laughs> now, now now what what advice because you've said you've been an entrepreneur for some time so what advice would you have for aspiring entrepreneurs i would say have a plan or an idea and don't be afraid to like run it by people that do other things that you don't know how to do because my friend who did marketing I mean she helped me and gave me a lot of ideas and information my friends who are dancers gave me a lot of information people in management people in all these other things that I didn't know about but I knew was going to be important at some point for me. And I just soaked it all in. I asked people questions. I think being a good listener is a big, <laughs> big thing. If you're going to be an entrepreneur, listen, soak it all in and see what you can apply to your business. But having that plan and asking the questions to people that knew the things I didn't know really helped me out the most. And, and you gain support because then you get to share your idea and what you want to do. And people are more excited about it, too. And they're more likely to support you, share your information and help you build your business even and maybe even invest. You never know. Yeah. Now, let's 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 kind of let's get specific about your industry. What what advice or what maybe some common mistakes do individuals have starting a business in the dance industry that you want to ensure they're aware of? I think with dance specifically, I think you have to, I think it's important to go and meet other dancers and go to other dance studios, get to know, doing socials, awesome way to do it too. What, what is a social? Uh, a social, like a dance studio will have like a social, a dance social. Okay. Um, and you can just go to the dance social. You'll meet other people that are there. And typically at dance socials from a dance studio, if they do those kinds of things, it's not just students. It's also instructors or people who are staff that work there. Um, so I think it's important to kind of get into the community, see what's going on in your area. There's always people looking for um, even dancers for small like videos, local videos and stuff like that. I get asked that all the time. And I've met other dancers that way. And that's kind of helped me like, oh, where do you teach? What are you doing? You know, you get all these questions asked and and you get hooked up kind of with people in that community to support you. I've gotten so many gigs because of that. Go, go dancing, private um, classes and things like that hired for um corporate people who wanted to do community building through twerk like, <laughs> it's really what, a thing hold on what kind of company is that I know. <laughs> uh, uh, actually you're familiar with it <laughs> um, i'm not gonna say anything we're gonna cut this short <laughs> i told you not to tell people i was at the <laughs> like dang it <laughs> my goodness so for the folks at home tell them how, how can they get in contact with you where's your brick and mortar location how if they want to take a class how do they figure it out yeah the i think the best way is to follow my instagram so it's twerk and fab so t-w-e-r-k the letter n f-a-b i post most of the updated information there because i am terrible at updating my website <laughs> Me too. So. but I do it, especially when I have a workshop. But yeah, most of the information is always there. If I have pop-ups, uh, a change in the schedule, um, special guests or anything like that, 
or if I'm going to be dancing somewhere else and people want to just come and support. So that's always the best way to go is through Instagram. I also have my website, twerkandfab.com. That will have all the information as well as the locations and how to sign up. So if you're going to sign up, you'd want to do it through twerkandfab.com because then I have the links for both of the studios that I teach at. I mean, people can DM me too, and that's fine. Um, But that's just the easiest way to do it on their own. (laughs) Um, Less admin work for me, which is nice. (laughs) Um, So on the east side, I teach at Studio E by VMAC, VMAC's Vitalidad uh, Movement Arts Center. And I teach there Wednesday nights at 6.30. And you sign up through them, but I have the link through my website. But directly, it's uh, vmacpdx.com. And then on my Tuesday night class, that one's at 7 o'clock, and that one's at Slay Studios in Tigard off of uh, Highway 99. And so Slay's beautiful. I love that studio, too. Uh, beautiful owner. Shout out to Rodney. He's Rodney. dope. <laughs> you got to get you on the show, yes, Rodney. Yes, definitely. Just come talk about your studio. Just, I mean, just does great work with the kids. Um, so I teach there, yeah, Tuesdays, and that one you would sign up directly through um, twerkandvab.com. Perfect. Perfect. Nisi. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Yeah, thank you. That was great. Thank you for tuning in to The Shades of Entrepreneurship. For more information, please follow The Shades of E on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or visit theshadesofe.com.